to the fourth lesson of Intermediate Level 1 of the Piano Skills Foundation. I hope that you've been enjoying the lesson so far. In this lesson, we're going to uh, finish up your, your little sonatina by Fritz Spindler. I'm going to show you how to just wrap it up and hopefully get it ready to perform for whoever you want to, whether it's just yourself or some friends, family, or maybe even a YouTube video that you put up there where I can see it. That would be so awesome. Anyway, we're going to finish up that sonatina. We're going to do some things in the key of G, uh, relative minor piece. Uh, there's, some, there's some hard reading exercises in this lesson. So take your time and remember, the lesson can, can go on for however long you want to. Don't take just one week to do it. If it's really hard, you can take two weeks. You can take three weeks. Uh, just try to master those reading exercises and, and enjoy practicing and memorizing the rest of your sonatina. And uh, I think that's it. So have a good time with this one. All right. So the first thing on your list, of course, is your sackbut. And so today, uh, just like last time, I'm going to do the G sackbut. I'm going to go a little faster this time. I'll go a couple clicks up from 96. So we're going to hit 104 on the conventional metronome. And... You, of course, could do all the keys. I'm just going to do one. You could do all those different keys for your sackbut. I'm going to put the metronome at 104. I'm going to play nice and smooth. And that was scales, arpeggios, cadence, and burlesque in the key of G. All right, so now for the next thing on your list. We're going to go to the major and minor triads. You'll notice that this week is written differently. After the major and minor triads, you'll see the word chromatically. And what that means in music is you're going to go up in half steps. So we're going to play every chord again, except now we're not going to group them according to their image. We're going to go up in half steps. This is called moving chromatically. We're going to play all the notes from C to C and then back down. And on every single one of those notes that I just played, you're going to build the chords that hopefully now you already know. The big difference is now they're mixed up because you'll start with a white, white, white. The next note, half a step up from there, is a black, white, black chord. And then the next chord, of course, is white, black, white, and then a black, white, black, and so on. So hopefully what you're going to do now that you know the image of every chord is you're going to be thinking ahead to what that next chord is. But what I want you to do is be able to say them while you play them because we want your brain to be thinking about these chords while you play them. So in, in, in future you can use these chords in the music that you're reading or the music you're memorizing and you'll recognize them. So this is the way to do it. We're going to start and, and sort of keep a beat while you say it like this. You're going to say C major D flat major D major, E flat major, E major, F major, G flat major, G major, 
A flat major, A major, B flat major, B major, C major. Now we're going to replay C and go back down. And remember, every time you play one of these chords and say the name of that chord, your mind should already be thinking about what the next chord is. You want to see the image in your head and you want to be thinking about how your fingers are going to hit it and how you're going to say it. So here we go. We're going to start on C. C major, B major, B flat major, A major, A flat major, G major, G flat major, F major, E major, E flat major, D major, D flat major, C major. And if you can't go as fast as I was just going, don't worry. Go as slow as you need to right now. We'll establish a faster beat eventually, but for now, just go as slow as you can and practice moving from chord to chord in half steps. Now let's try the minors. C minor, C sharp minor, D minor, E flat minor, E minor, F minor, F sharp minor, G minor, G sharp minor, A minor, B flat minor, B minor, C minor, C minor, B minor, B flat minor, A minor, G sharp minor, G minor, F sharp minor, F minor, E minor, E flat minor, D minor, C sharp minor, C minor. And that's how you do the major and minor triads chromatically. Good luck with that. All right. So the next thing on your list is the first reading exercise this lesson. It is both ways in G. And I'm going to just go through phrase by phrase as usual and do the right hand, left hand, both. I want to point out that on the first line, the left hand is playing an Alberti bass pattern on a bunch of chords. So what I'd like to do is start with the left hand by blocking the chords first. Just blocking them and sort of figuring out what they are. Hopefully you'll notice if you play all three notes of the left hand in the first measure, it, it forms the one chord in the key of G. And then in the next measure, you switch to the four chord, and then you go back to the one chord. And then when you get to the third measure, you do a form of the five seven chord that looks like this, and then another voicing of the five seven chord that looks like this. This is the one you're more used to, the one you do in your cadence. And then it comes right back to that other voicing, and you finish the line with the G chord. So I just blocked through, I just blocked through all the left hand chords. And you should do that first too. If you go through and block them like that, it's easier to play the Alberti bass pattern. So let me go through and block them one more time. See if you can keep up and keep track of which I'm doing. In the first measure, you play the one chord twice. And then in the second measure, you go to the four chord, and then you come back to the one chord. In the third measure, you do the 5-7 chord, and then the 5-7 chord with a different voicing. And then the fourth measure, you come right back to the 5-7 chord with an A on the bottom, and you finish with a 1 chord. And then, of course, you want to go to the first chord of the next line, measure 5, and it's just a solid 1 chord. Okay? Now, if you practice through those chords like that, uh, then playing it as written will be easier. I'm going to turn the metronome on really slow, about 54 for the quarter note and play the left hand. When the left hand is playing uh, eighth notes, this quarter note doesn't seem that slow. So here's how you would count it and play those chords in an Alberti bass pattern as it's written. You will try to keep your eyes on the music and count out loud. One and two and three and four and play it softly and two and three and four. Five seven, one and two, another five seven and four. Back to the five seven again. And then the one chord, and four, and one, and that's it. I just did the left hand. Practice that over and over till you get the hang of it. And then here's how the right hand goes. Your right hand starts with the fifth finger on D. You would count it like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And then one 
once you've mastered the right hand, put them together. You know, this, I almost feel like this is a little too fast for somebody who's just starting this, so I'm gonna slow it down some more. On a conventional metronome, 54, if you go two clicks down, you get to be 50. So I think I'm gonna go two clicks down and do 50. So here we go, we're at 50. And we're gonna play both hands. And of course, you can go even slower if you need to. One and two. that my right hand is louder than my left. One, two, I goofed. And four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Hopefully you caught my goof, but uh, I think it was good enough that you can see how it fits together. And do that line till you get three perfects. And then move on to the second line. The second line starting at measure five. Let's do the left hand first again. One, and two, and three. Recognize these chords, I hope. Four, one, and two, and three, and four, one. And then you'll notice on the third line that the left hand starts playing the melody. So at measure nine, make sure the left hand comes in strong. On all the chords that we just learned in the second line, you should keep it nice and soft because the right hand still has the melody. So get that left hand learned, master it, counting out loud with your eyes on the music. And now let's learn the right hand. At measure five. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Second finger. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Then the right hand starts the Alberti bass pattern. So you can be ready for a, a one chord on the next line. So now once you've mastered the right hand and the left hand in measure five, Put them together like this. One and two and three and four. One and two. I goof that. Three. Four. Let me do that again. You'll notice that I accidentally did a staccato in the right hand and held, held the left hand in measure six. Instead, it should have been. Okay, so I call that dyslexic articulation. <laughs> anyway, we're going to try it again. Start at measure five. One and two. Left hand staccato, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one. Okay, and you'll notice when I play the first note of the next line, the left hand is louder because it has the melody now. All right, so now, after you've mastered that second line, and I know you probably realize the hard part is keeping one hand staccato while the other one plays smooth. So make sure you master that as well. And then of course you can put your first two lines together. I'm gonna to move on to measure nine or the third line. Let's do the right hand first this time. We're gonna do the same thing we did when, when we did the first line. Instead of just playing the Alberti bass, don't you notice I call it Alberti bass, but it's just an Alberti pattern. Now it's in the treble. I guess we could call it Alberti treble. <laughs> With the right hand, you can just block the chords. Sorry, got to move the music where you can see it. Block, block through the right hand chords first and then play the pattern. That's what I'm about to do. At measure nine, the right hand has the one chord twice, then the four chord, and then back to the one chord. Now we're in the third measure of that line, which is measure 11. And it's the same chords we had in the left hand on the first line. You do the five seven chord with an A on the bottom, and then the five seven chord with F sharp on the bottom. And then again, back to the 5-7 and that voicing, and then the one chord. And then the bottom line, measure 13, you do the chords. As you can see, all I did was I just switched the, the parts. So now the right hand's playing the accompaniment and the left hand's playing the melody. So here we go, right hand, play the Alberti, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the metronome on. So you can hear a steady beat. It goes like this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three back to the one chord then the five seven one and two playing it nice and soft and smooth one and two and three and four and one and that's the right hand part get that mastered with your eyes on the music and counting and then the left hand starting at measure nine 
and make the left hand play musically and stronger than the right hand. One and two. Once you have that learned, put them together. Okay, so that was the third line. Once you've got your three perfects on that, then go ahead and put it together with the first two lines, play through them all. I'm gonna move on to the bottom line. Measure 13, right hand by itself. One and two, lightly. Three and four, the four chord. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Now it's the left hand's turn. that put them together notice I'm trying to make my left hand louder than my right hand all right so now once you have done your three perfects on the bottom line of course it's time to play the whole thing through and I want to show you what it's going to sound like in the range on your uh, homework sheet I said 63 for the bottom of the range so let's do it through at 63 and then I'll do it through again at 100. Here it is. I'll try to make it through without too many mistakes. One and two. at 63. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this up to 100. 100 and we'll play it one more time so you can hear what it sounds like if you ever get it this fast. You don't have to get it this fast because if you did you'd have to work on it probably for an extra week maybe but here's what it would sound like. One and two and three. that video a couple times and catch exactly where I goofed. I lost my right hand pattern right in here. If you want to see something really cool, you can watch that. But anyway, that's kind of what the thing sounds like. And that was both ways in G. Have fun with that. All right. So your next reading piece this week is Little Rumba in E minor. E minor is related to the key of G major. G major looks like this and has an F sharp in it. E minor 
has the same notes, but it starts on E. So the one chord is E minor. You'll learn more about the key of E minor in one of the next levels, but not in this level. For now, just enjoy trying to read a piece in the key of E minor. And this is one of the harder pieces when it comes to um, rhythm and articulation as well as fingering. So really watch the fingerings and the articulations carefully. I'm gonna go through phrase by phrase. You're gonna notice at the bottom of the page, you're gonna do a DC al fine, which means back to the beginning, okay? And then on the, uh, on the repeat of that first half, the end is right here, um, on that repeat, your right hand plays an octave higher, which we might not work on today because once you've learned these two lines and done your three perfects, you actually know, already, already know how to play it. On the playthrough, you'll see me jump up an octave, and so you'll see how that works. But let's get started on this. Good luck. Take it slow. I'm going to put the metronome at about half the speed, so I'm at 50 right now. I have it at 50, and you can go even slower than that if you need to. But here's the demonstration of the right hand. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. the right hand and watch out for those tricky fingerings in the right hand and here's what the left hand looks like second fingers on the low of E one and two and three and four one and two and three and four one and two and three and four now F sharp So hopefully you understand that left hand part. Once you get that mastered, try putting them together. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Okay, and that was the first line. Now once you get that three perfect, which might take a while. This is a tricky piece on every line, so don't be frustrated if it takes you a while. And if you you know try a whole bunch and you're still not getting any perfect, you might want to slow it down even more. But I'm gonna go ahead and move on, demonstrating the second line, starting at measure five. Right hand has a two, four. Now watch this fingering, it's very tricky. Let me do it without the metronome. One and two, and, and then the second finger's on the D sharp. Three and four. Two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and then you jump to a two, five, and to cut, you do it, end up with a one, four on the sixth there. And then you jump up, and then you get ready for the next line. Maybe you come in on the and at measure nine, one, and, just so you're used to jumping up there. Of course you can look at your keyboard for those type of jumps. There's a, several little jumps in this piece that you should not feel bad about having to look at the keyboard for. So now let's go ahead and do that again, right hand, but with the metronome. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and. So I got my, my hand ready up here. Okay, once you get that right hand memorized, not memorized, sorry, you don't have to memorize these. Once you get it mastered, play the left hand. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Now smooth. Now hopefully you notice that that low, low note right here, right here, that many, many lines down, nobody really knows what those are without figuring them out. It's an E, just so you know. So we went down to E. So the pinky's on this low E. I don't know if you can see that on this on this screen. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and play both hands starting at measure five, once you've mastered the left hand and the right hand. Here we go. One and two. Four, 
and, and that's how that second line goes. Once you get that mastered and you get your three perfects, go ahead and put those two lines together, but we're gonna go ahead and try measure nine, the third line, right hand by self. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three off on four. One and. And I played the and of the next line, so you have to get up there. And of course, you can look for that jump. Now we're going to do the left hand by itself. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One. And once you get that left hand learned, here's how you put them together. One and two and three. Once you get your three perfect on that, you, of course, you can play the first three lines all together. I'm going to move on to the very bottom line, starting with the right hand, measure 13. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One Back to the beginning, one, two. All right, I almost forgot that the beginning, the right hand has to now do it an octave higher, but I caught that. But you will, you know, don't be tempted to drop back down like I did. Stay up there and play beat two at the beginning, okay? So now, once you get the right hand learned, left hand goes like this. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One. Once you've mastered the left hand and the right hand separately, put them together like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One, two. And that way you're ready to go back to the beginning with the right hand and octave higher. Now, once you've gotten your three perfects there and you want to try to play through the whole thing, you can do that. Um, and then you're also ready to just play the entire piece. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the range that I, I mentioned on your um, assignment sheet at the beginning here of this lesson. It says to play 63 to 100, so I'll show you what it sounds like at 63. And you can work hard until you get it. This is one of the trickiest pieces in the whole intermediate level. So. Um, you know, if you don't get it all the way up beyond 63, that's fine. Here's what it sounds like at 63. One and two and three and four and three and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and two and three and four. And
So that was it at 63. And you might have noticed at the very beginning I made some fingering goofs, but I was able to cover. If you want to go back and watch the video, see if you can catch some of those goofs, that would be awesome. But I'm going to go on and see if I can make it through without too many goofs at 100. I have not practiced this piece enough, really, to get that good, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. Here we go. One, two, and might notice I hope you can find it if you look at the video carefully you'll see some goofs that I made on the first time through down here but uh, not too bad hopefully you can get through it like that if you never make it up to 100 don't worry about that you can just somewhere between 63 and 100 would be acceptable and I hope you have fun with that All right so now the last thing on your list is your memorized piece which at this point we've already worked through in the first three lessons and you've memorized every phrase of the sonatina in C. Um, today I want to just show you how to sort of finish it up so that if you want to perform it for family and friends or to um, like make a video perhaps and put it up on YouTube, I would love that. I'd love to see somebody give a shout out and show me how they've learned their piece. That would be so cool. But some sort of performance opportunity would be great. But before you do that, you need to work hard at phrase by phrase practicing until you really build some confidence. So what I want to do today is show you the routine that you can use to go through. On your homework sheet, I put metronome speed 112 all the way up through 176. Um, just try to get it into that range. If you want to start slower, you certainly can. But I would like to demonstrate for you the practice routine that I would do, including a little bit longer overlaps. Um, you'll see some some phrasing, you know, that I'm going to be doing longer phrases because like these bottom two lines repeat. So I'll probably do eight measures and so forth. But you still do the hand separate practice to make sure your memory is solid. So you set the music up in front of you, but you don't necessarily look at it while you're practicing. You just use it as sort of a map or a guide. I'm going to put the metronome at 112. As usual, I'm using sort of the, I'm using the um, uh, standard metronome numbers, even though I'm using a, a I'm, whoops, my metronome just did something strange. <laughs> I'm using the uh, smartphone metronome, which means you could use just like tens. I like to go by tens. But uh, for the standard metronome, I wanted to make sure I had those numbers. And I go two clicks up at a time, which if we're starting at 112, you'll see what happens. Um, I like to do right hand, left hand, both, three perfect on each phrase, and the three perfects will be up at different levels. So uh, if we start at 112, I just want to show you the first phrase. I'm going to go phrase by phrase. It shouldn't take too long on the video, and you can sort of get the gist of it. You don't have to necessarily watch the whole thing, or you could if you want, but I'll go through. And I like to overlap a little bit, like a whole measure into each one. You'll see what I'm saying. So from the beginning, let's get this thing started. One and two and three. One. That was the right hand on the first phrase. Hopefully you notice I'm trying to do some musical things, starting, you know, soft, crescendoing. You can start putting all that musical stuff into even your hand separate practice. For instance, as I do the left hand, notice how I'm doing it soft and lightly on these chords, and then really smooth and soft underneath. One and two and three. do both hands on the first phrase. And that would be my first perfect one. Then standard metronome, two clicks up would be 120. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again at 120. My 
second perfect. And so if I get my second perfect at 120, I'm going to go two clicks up on the standard metronome is 132. So we just finished practicing the first phrase and we're up at 132. Now I'm going to go back to where I started, 112, and do the next phrase the same way. Now the next phrase has a repeat sign, so I'm going to do the first time onto the repeat, and then when we get our second perfect one, I'll go on to the next part, and maybe the third perfect, I'll go on to the next part. So you don't have to do the repeat every time, but I'm going to just show you how I would do this practice. Right hand first. to the beginning. Okay, now it's the left hand's turn. Measure five. One, two, one, and two, and one, and two, and okay, now both hands taking the repeat. first perfect one. I'll go two clicks up to 120 and I'm going to go ahead and take uh, not the repeat this time but I'll go to the first notes of measure nine. I'm going to overlap the whole measure. Oh sorry. And I just did the wrong fingering in the left hand. Hopefully you noticed that. But we're going to go on as if I didn't do it that way. And we're going to go two clicks up to 132. I think I'll do my third perfect to measure nine again and see if I can get the fingering right this time. Of course, if you goof up the fingering, you wouldn't consider that a perfect one. But just for the brevity's sake, I will do it. I got the left hand fingering and the right hand I goofed, but hopefully you didn't notice. All right. Now, once you get those two lines, put them together, and that's I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to play from the beginning with a repeat up at 132. So now I'm going to drop the metronome back down. We successfully practiced the first two lines well. And now I'm, we're going to go ahead and show you how to practice measure nine all the way through to the second page, measure 17, right hand by itself. One, two, and three. I'm going to start soft. Big sound. Okay, now so that's the right hand for those whole eight measures. Now the left hand, one and two and. Okay, all right, now we're gonna put the hands together. that at one we'll call it perfect even though as you saw I goofed up the left hand fingering a few times now, if you come up with a better left hand fingering don't worry about it you can use that mine is a little goofy I just discovered but I'm gonna try to see if I can stick with it so here we go this is the second perfect up it I just moved it up to 120 and here we go up at 
120, and I'm going to move it up to 132. That'd be two clicks up on the standard metronome. Here it goes. gotten that all um, at 132 you can go all the way back and play through the whole thing that you've already practiced I'm gonna go ahead and do that just show you this is the routine from the beginning now adding it all together played through all the parts you've already practiced then there's only one part really left to do it and that is these two lines at the top. So here goes measure 16 with the right hand I'm gonna go ahead and actually do the whole uh, four measures there plus I'm gonna add this little bridge back to our main theme and overlap to here so I'm overlapping into measure 22 this is how you would do that with a metronome at 112 oops sorry an octifier one Here comes the left hand. Measure 16. One, two, three. Getting softer each time. And then move it up. Off. And then wait. Two, three, four, one, and two, and three. All right, now let's do both hands. Getting softer. Now start soft. Bigger and then suddenly soft. Okay, there's the first perfect one. Now I'll move the metronome up to 120 and do it again. And then for our third perfect, move it up to 132. successfully practiced the entire piece because you know that the last two lines are the same as the first. Now the final step then is for, a, for you to take what you've done and play through the entire piece and of course all of this hopefully has been, been doing by memory so now you're ready to play the whole thing by memory and I'll play through it at 132 to show you what it sounds like at that tempo and then I'll play through it again at 176 to see where you might be headed with it.
Oops. hopefully you can trace down the goof that I just made on the, like measure 18 but um, after that hopefully over a period of weeks you can work your way up to 176 or that range and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and you're going to uh, you know use your metronome at a t high speed but hopefully uh, turn your metronome off once you get up there and just play it with no metronome which is the way I'd like to do it now but I'm gonna sort of try to be in this range and you can feel free to play it however you want at that point. That was the final performance of Sonatina in C. Good luck with that!